Greetings customizers and welcome to the next adventure of Talking Hands Customs to all my subscribers. Thank you very much and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the channel. We have another vehicle spotlight. This time we're going to be talking about the G.I. Joe Skyhawk, uh, otherwise known as the VTOL or Vertical Takeoff and Landing. It was a neat little vehicle from 1984 that could carry three Joes as you can see here, one in the cockpit and one on each skid. And it had rotating engines, two missiles, a swivel chin gun, and then they had two more cannons, one on either side of the chin here, and these removable fins, etc. So, uh, without further ado, let's dive into this one a little bit here. If I can get the figures off the skids. There we go. And the, uh, the Skyhawk is definitely one of those vehicles that is ripe for customization. Um, there's lots you can do with it. There's lots you have to be careful of. And at the end, as long as you're willing to put in the time and the patience, you will get a uh, nice product at the end. So let's begin with the cockpit. In this case, the cockpit itself is a uh, single piece molded chair. You can see it's here, it's molded in dark gray. And it's got the typical uh, action figure peg on the back here to keep your Joes in. And that's nice, uh, which we'll use to advantage on some of our customs because it actually keeps the Joes back mostly off and, uh, and the rest of the body for that matter, off the chair. So if you do end up painting the chair, I recommend leaving the peg unpainted. And that way you can put any Joe you want in there and it will actually keep it off from any heavy contact with inside, uh, from inside the cockpit. Uh, unfortunately, you can't remove it because the cockpit itself, or the fuselage itself, is comes from the factory glued. Uh, in some cases, I've seen examples where it might have come apart uh, at some point in the 1980s, and a loving parent glued it back together a little overzealously. But um, it is glued. In fact, it's not uncommon. Uh, you can see it here. There's, you can see the glue in there as well. Um, to have a slightly sloppy factory applied glue. So you may want to sand that down depending on whether or not it's standing proud of the Skyhawk itself. Now, uh, aside from that, the canopy here uh, is free moving, but there is a friction point right when you come up to here. And that's what kind of hangs it up and keeps it in its upright position. That becomes a problem for paint removal. So the trick that I use is I just gently pry the canopy apart like this and then lift it off and then place a figure in, and then again repeat the same process. A little bit of friction from the canopy pins is okay, but we're trying to uh, eliminate any of that hard contact, because what it'll do is it'll produce a nasty streak here, and you might even get some rubbing from the canopy itself. So I find that if I lift it up just to touch the first point of friction and leave it there to put a figure in, it's usually good, or I just take the canopy right off. But keep that in mind that there is a good amount of friction that occurs on the sides here uh, for any sort of paint loss. Um, the other bonus to this is that it's overall it's a simple vehicle um, and all the parts come off but we'll get to that in a second. So uh, the engines rotate and uh, once I take them off I'll show you the considerations for that but I wanted to talk about the chin guns next. Um, technically they can come out. There's a pin that goes into the bottom of the fuselage and if you can pry that out then these should pop out. They pop back in very easily. I've uh, bought incomplete Skyhawks and mounted separate chin guns that, from another purchase inside. And there was no, while there was friction to get it into that hole, there was no uh, paint rub on there. So it goes in way easier than it comes out. Um, and what I've done for more than 50% of my custom Skyhawks is I just tape these in place and maybe protect the inside where the gun is as well. And then I just move it from one side to the other. And that is more than enough movement to allow you to cover the bottom of the fuselage. Um, so let's get on with this assembly here. Uh, let's start with the engines because there is uh, some considerations there. On uh, most copies uh, of the original there, the engines will be quite floppy because uh, the plastic shrinks over time. Uh, you can also get some damage here uh, and we'll look at that in a sec. This one's fine, um, but it is an area of concern. Uh, the first thing being is that once you get paint, if you paint these engines, um, they're pretty much going to stay in the same position or whatever position you last reinstalled them in. And that's because, ooh, this one's going to fight me a bit. Um, there will be friction because what happens is the you put a coat of paint on the engines then you get a coat of paint on the bracket here and there will be rub. Um, you can see some of that here over time uh, displayed between the engines there. 
and you're gonna get the same thing with your paint. So what I usually end up doing is once I get my uh, Skyhawk painted, my engines will stay in the horizontal or forward flying position, uh, just because it looks better on the shelf to me. But I mean, if you like it vertical or somewhere else in between, then that's on you. It's absolutely your choice. Um, so that one's fighting me a bit. I'm gonna take it off, but uh, let's move to the fins. Um, just to give us some room to work here, I'll need to get my fingers in there. So with the fins here, um, they are a double-edged sword. And I don't mean that uh, because they're sharp. I mean it because they are a large surface, which makes them ripe for stickers, as you can see here on the original layout. But it's also a large surface on the inside that can be clearly seen from different angles of view. So the implication is, is that if you put a pattern on this, like Tiger Force or something like that, it's a good practice to put it on the other side as well. Um, I will be doing a Tiger Force Skyhawk in the near future, so watch out for that one. But uh, overall, uh, any pattern I've done, I've replicated on the inside. And I'll draw your attention to the video where I made the um, Slaughter's Marauders Goss Hawk or the Slaughter's Marauders Skyhawk, in that I carried the pattern on on the inside. And it behooves you as a customizer to try and line up the pattern on both sides as much as you can. At the end of the day, again, with everything else, it's your call. The vertical fin also removes uh, nice and easily, and again with the other side fin as well. So with the engines here, what I like to do if they're a little bit challenging to remove is I put a thumb on the back of the bracket and a thumb on the front of the bracket just to hold them together, and then I gently apply force to get it up, and we'll see what happens here. There we go. Sometimes rotation is good because the bottom of the engines have these cutouts, so it's not a perfect sphere. So if they don't pop right up like that, then just kind of rotate the engine's uh, back end up first, and it should create enough of a gap that you can uh, leverage that. Now, when you see these engines here, you'll see a lot of this kind of light gray material here. Some of it's uh, scratching in the plastic, and some of it's forms of glue, because some people probably tried to glue them so they would stay there uh, in the horizontal or flying forward flying position. Um, so just, you can take a knife or uh, some light sandpaper if you want to scrape that down a bit, especially if it's got a little bit of a texture to it, because you don't want that to show through on your newer paint. Um, so, again with the fins here, the other good thing about them coming off is that this actually helps you lay out your color scheme. Uh, and I'll show you with some examples of some custom Skyhawks in a quick minute here. But the modularity of this vehicle, the fact that it comes apart in these nice clean parts, really helps you plan your scheme. Um, two missiles as well they pop onto the skis and of course lastly but not least um, are the skis themselves these are original skis however I have used 3d printed parts on my other Skyhawk customs uh, and those are not to be shied away from we've talked about uh, 3d custom or three excuse me 3d printed parts a lot so again my philosophy remains the same if you can find them get them because Skyhawks will often come with their skis off the reason being is that these are very fragile. They are uh, a soft plastic, and because they're long and thin in all of their dimensions, um, they are prone to warpage and breakage. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could snap this set in half just by twisting the skis in opposite directions. So speaking of that, you can see on the back here, uh, the good thing about originals and good 3D printed ones, if you can find them, is they'll have these two notches here on either side. And what that does is when you're putting the skis back on, it keeps it uh, properly centered. So when you reattach the skis, there will be some friction and potentially some paint damage around here, depending on. Um, but at least you won't have to constantly pull it out and push it back in to try and get it centered because these two tabs here will tell you exactly how it needs to go. And the way I like to remove my skis is I will hook my index fingers around the edges of the skis like this. And then I will put my two thumbs there in the, sec in the uh, bottom of the fuselage. And then I'll do this kind of wiggling, rotating pull and we'll see every Skyhawk's just a little different, but then it'll come off like that. And as you can see there, the skis are undamaged and in one piece. A little bit of bend in them, and I can fix that later with some hot, uh, with a hair dryer. Uh, and there you have it. So fundamentally right now, actually let's get that canopy off again. Um, and with the canopy, uh, I didn't mention earlier, if you didn't see the uh, Gosshawk video, these pins are extremely common to have broken. And that can be fixed with some of that Milliput product I showed you in a previous video uh, with a pin for a base support. And then it'll be a perfectly functioning canopy again. So don't be shy about getting broken canopies. Even if you buy a Skyhawk like this and you're buying parts for the other ones, the broken ones will be cheaper and you know how to fix them now. So you can absolutely do that and maybe save yourself some money. The other thing I like doing too is depending on the stickers I'm going to put on in the end, um, if this uh, 
cockpit sticker is done nicely enough, I will actually cover that with masking tape and preserve it for my custom so I don't have to buy another Skyhawk set just to get a control panel on there. Not that you necessarily have to do that anyway, but why not? It's a good sticker and uh, it certainly looks the business. So, usually this is what the breakdown of the Skyhawk would look like. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the chair being what it is, you'll have to mask that off either using masking fluid, which could be a little awkward. Um, I used Tamiya paper tape for the edges because it's really nice uh, to manipulate. And then I'll fill the larger gaps with some, uh, with some blue painter's tape. Uh, and then I'll tape these cannons off individually because uh, I can get paint in the middle and then rotate for either side to get full coverage. And depending on how I'm feeling, I might either put liquid mask in there or some other tape to block it off. Or worst case, I'll hand paint it. And if I get sloppy, I'll just try and match this gray paint to touch it up when I'm done. Um, and that's the size of it. So uh, uh, as with any custom, right, you wanna clear off the stickers and depending on what you wanna do, uh, you know, pick your scheme and go from there. So speaking of that, uh, with the Skyhawk, what I've noticed is I've done almost 11 of them now, I think. And some patterns can emerge. So um, there are certainly many variations within those patterns. And what I mean by that is you might find that you're always putting the base color on the fuselage with the accent colors on the fins and a different accent color on the skis in the cockpit, etc, etc, etc. Having done 11 of these, I promise that you will not get bored with the variations. And even if you think that you're starting to copy yourself with every single w version that you do, there's ways to get around that. So, um, slight little variations, making uh, the cockpit a different color from the skis or what have you. So I'm gonna show you some examples to illustrate my point. Just gonna get the Skyhawk original out of the way. This one will be on the customizing board next. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with something uh, relatively simple. So this one here is gonna be, a, it's a partial repaint and it's technically incomplete, but it served my purposes perfectly. Uh, the parts that are unpainted are the fin and the canopy and everything else got my Steel Brigade treatment. Uh, the part that's missing, as you can see here, are the chin guns. And the, I found this Skyhawk like this, missing skis. These are 3D printed skis. And I had a eureka moment and said, wait a minute, I can do my Steel Brigade Skyhawk. If you're unfamiliar with it, there was a 2005, I think, convention exclusive where they tried to make a Steel Brigade Skyhawk, except they used this blue and gray swirly plastic for the most of it, and it didn't have any chin guns on it, which I thought was a little weird because I like the chin guns a lot. But anyway, uh, in this case, I owned one, but I sold it because I didn't like it. And this was my chance, as I've mentioned before, that we can correct some of Hasbro's mistakes. And I'm sure that this is what they meant to put out when they did a 2005 Steel Brigade Skyhawk. Um, so everything is pretty straightforward. As you can see, by adding the paint to the fuselage and the engines, my engines now sit perfectly horizontal and I don't move them. I don't want to ruin the paint because it'll get some nasty stuff going on up in here. Uh, other than that, pretty standard Steel Brigade colors. Uh, if you want to know what those are, check out the uh, Steel Brigade uh, Vamp Mark II I made in a previous video, and that'll let you, that'll tell you everything you need to know about those colors. Um, so with the unpainted cockpit, like I said, I only lifted up to about there, but you can see I masked off the seat to keep it uh, un unpainted there. Um, so if I did buy a original Steel Brigade figure, I could comfortably put it in there with uh, zero concern about any paint transfer whatsoever. For now, I've left the missiles gray as well, um, but I may paint them black at a future date. I don't know. Uh, like with any custom, you can always go back to it, and we'll definitely do some videos about that. Uh, other than that, you can start to see that I chose to make the uh, cockpit and the rear fin the same color, then just two side fins and some matching silver high and low with the main fuselage color being tan. Uh, trying to balance out the proportions of the colors on the figure to the colors on the vehicle, just like we did with the Vant Mark II. Um, and that's all there is to it. And of course, without having to paint the canopy, I preserve the sticker inside with zero effort. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So this is a partial repaint with uh, that's incomplete with some 3D augmentation. Uh, and there's your first go at it. And uh, what I like I said with the modularity of the Skyhawk it lets you break up that color pattern which actually allows you to distribute your colors a little bit more creatively and a little more easily because there are so many parts to such a small vehicle other vehicles like the vamp can be difficult depending on what you're trying to do 
um, any of the smaller vehicles like this that just have fewer parts. But in this case, with all of the fins and the engines and the skis and the missiles and everything else, uh, it certainly lends itself well to breaking up those colors. So let's show you the next example. And we'll go to the opposite end of the spectrum. So now we have the Iron Grenadier Skyhawk, or what I like to call the uh, Destro's Disparager, and this is actually Voltar's ride that I made. So again, with the breakup of the colors, is that we have the main fuselage color, which I carried on through the side fins. Uh, and then I did an accent color of red on the front, gold on the back to match the missiles, and then light gray for the skis and that. And what it does is you get high-low gold, oh sorry, and also the uh, chin guns are gold as well with a couple of stickers on the bottom. Um, so that gets you the gold, front, middle, uh, excuse me, <laughs> rear, middle, front. I'll be okay. And then it also gives you some high and low mix for those colors as well. You've got high and low gray with black throughout and a pop of color in the front for red. Um, and what that does is uh, when I do my Iron Grenadiers vehicles, my basis of it is the demon. I love the color spread on that uh, with the mostly black and again the accents being the colors that they are. Um, had a little fun with the gold tail. Um, just to give it another pop of color. I thought red might have been a little bit too much and I didn't want to have too much gray in there. So I really like the way that turned out. And of course, with some gold foil stickers uh, and etc. from uh, Toy Hacks, it really makes it pop. These are original skis on this one. All the parts are original. But you can see that by just changing the formula ever so slightly, it doesn't mean you always have to paint the fins the same color as it, as everything as the other fin up here and then the as same as the canopy etc etc so there are many variations to be had and i mean a lot so that's the disparager there and while we're on the darker side of the color spectrum let's take a look at this one here so this is my night force skyhawk which i have yet to name or i named it and i forget what it is either way it doesn't matter um and again, I've done this sort of the same thing. So you've got the black fuselage with the black fins, but this time I kept the tail fin black as well. Um, I did the uh, canopy in that gray color, and then of course fluorescent orange highlights and accents, and uh, with of course glow-in-the-dark stickers from Rattler Repros, uh, with a custom-painted Night Force Crazy Legs, by the way. So that's an, that's an original red and gray Crazy Legs that I painted in Night Force colors. Um, and again, as you can see, now we've taken the you know, the, the black Skyhawk made it really pop with the orange of Night Force. And of course, now it's back on the Joe team where it belongs. So um, again, variations on a theme, right? It's while the Skyhawk has the black fuselage, the same as the uh, Iron Grenadiers version, everything else is different enough, including the, uh, glow, the background for the glow in the dark stickers, changes the color balance and scheme enough that you could park them right beside each other and you wouldn't be like, well, they're almost the same. They're strikingly different, um, although, they have some common out. And now I'm going to show you one more. And by one, I mean two, or maybe one. We'll see. We'll see. So now we're really getting into the uh, imaginative side of customizing with this vehicle here. Uh, this will go into a deeper subject that we are going to explore together. However, I'll give you the quick rundown right now. I had an idea that if I took the Python Patrol vehicle or figure colors and apply them to a vehicle that you could get some more variation with it. It also let me use my airbrush and try something new. And quite frankly, this can get done a lot faster than the traditional Python scheme. Um, and then what I didn't realize is that Toys R Us basically did the same thing back in the early 2000s when they released a second wave of Python Patrol figures in vehicle color. So I just did the exact opposite without even really thinking about it. Uh, but here you go again. So this time what I did uh, as another variation of color distribution is I made the fins and the canopy the same color with a black fuselage and then maroon uh, engines and missiles and then light gray skis. And that was my attempt at balancing the colors as they are on the Python officer on the vehicle itself. Um, and I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Uh, it's not the only one that's like this, and I have other vehicles other than the Skyhawk that are done there, but we'll talk more about that in another video. But I'll show you one more variation of this uh, just to show you how far you can go, and I'll have them on screen together to show you the variation. And that variation comes in the form of the Python Televiper Skyhawk. So same thing, uh, grays, uh, yellows, a lighter red, um, or less purpley red anyway, with some black accents, etc. And of course the Python Patrol yellow. Um, 
in what I perceive to be the right balance of colors based off the Python Televiper. Uh, same colors as the Python Viper, but if I did them, they might be a slightly different uh, ratio. Who knows? But now I'm going to show them to you right beside each other. I'm just going to get the lazy Susan out of the way here. Um, and you can see that while they're both Python Patrol and they both adopted the same idea, they're wildly different from each other in that, yes, the fins could be argued to be the same, but the tail fins are different and the cockpits are different, and the main fuselage is different, and I almost flipped them, basically, in that this one has a solid cockpit and a camouflaged fuselage, and this one has a camouflaged cockpit and a solid fuselage. So you can see that just by tweaking those ideas ever so slightly, you get two customs that are they're both fan, uh, fantastic for the eye to catch, and they're also uh, related, but different enough so that way you're not repeating the same thing over and over again. So, you know, you wouldn't be just putting Python televipers on a Skyhawk in this pattern or vice versa. They're different enough to go ping and really catch the eye. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what they're, um, well, that's what all there is to it really. And that uh, same thing there with the original skis and whatnot. So these are both all original parts uh, and with commonality, right? I want them to be on the same team, but not necessarily beholden to the same pattern. So now that you've seen some of these, I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the painting considerations for the Skyhawk. Okay, so with painting this, there's a few considerations. So you've got some nooks and crannies here in the upper part of the cockpit area to make sure that you uh, don't forget to paint. Sometimes when you're changing angles and everything, you might forget to uh, hit every single angle. The chair itself, if you're going to paint it, I recommend masking off the uh, figure peg. If not, then uh, masking off the entire chair itself. This joystick here will provide a little bit of a challenge for you when you're trying to get masking between the chair and the fuselage. So, you know, act accordingly. The side of the fuselage here has some greebly detail and we've talked about how to hit that from different angles or if you use your paintbrush to get in there and make sure you get everything covered so none of your primer or whatever shows through. Uh, some lighter detail here, which isn't so, so bad, but it's still enough to warrant uh, changing the angle of your spray or at least making sure your brush gets in there uh, nice and uh, firmly to get all the paint in. For the engine bracket, again, it could be warped a little bit, so you could fix that a bit. Uh, once you get a layer of paint on the bracket and a layer of paint on the engines potentially, you should have a rectification of the loose engine issue. If not, um, don't shy away from using the clear nail polish there to build up that inner surface little bits at a time to the point where it basically becomes, um, you get the same effect basically, but using the thick nail polish just makes it happen a little bit faster. When painting uh, these wing attachment points or these fin attachment points back here, keep in mind that they're thick. So that way, if you hit this even from an angle, you won't necessarily get the whole frontage. So I tend to spray or paint uh, the sides as if they were almost like uh, box shaped. And I treat this as a solid side, uh, front and back. The other thing too, with the connection point for the fin, is that because the fin is so thin, it's basic, basically uniformly thin for that side, that you wanna ensure that you paint the sides of the attachment point because you will see them. Uh, same thing back here, this little fairing back here can be a bit of a paint trap, so make sure you uh, get it from all angles. Underneath here, uh, where the skis attach, that's where you're gonna get uh, some potential, potential paint damage in there, so just keep that in mind. And when you're removing any paint there, just be cautious to not overdo it, and then you'll be chasing it all over the place. Um, the rotating cannons, like I said, uh, mask individually. There's more than enough movement there to swing them from one side to the other, then do the middle and get all the paint on the lower fuselage as you require. Um, if you're painting the guns, then ensure that you use your detail brush and you get the side of the mounting point there and there as well, because if you only do the front, you'll break the illusion uh, if you have the guns rotated. Uh, and that's the fuselage itself. For the fins, uh, keep in mind that these are engraved details here, so that's why the stickers are the size they are is that uh, if you put a larger sticker on there, that's cool, but it might, over time anyway, become a bit of a uh, dirt trap in there, but nothing too crazy. Just make sure you're cleaning your collectible or your customs on, the, on a regular and you'll be fine. When you're painting this, you can see there's some wear on that tab there. That tab does not fully seat, uh, at least on the examples I have, into the Skyhawk. And you don't, I mean, if you push it super hard, it kind of does, but um, just be, cognizant of that and that you want to paint that in its totality uh, that goes for both fins uh, the tail fin here same thing is that it can be a little um, misleading and that you want to make sure you get paint on all the edges especially for these fins too uh, sometimes you'll find that when you're painting the top 
or the front and then the back, however you want to look at it, is that the, ang the edge of the fins gets missed, uh, or at least sporadically covered. So ensure you pay attention to that particular detail. Other than that, the tail's pretty straightforward. And again, just ensuring that you get the paint everywhere you want it to go. Uh, canopy. So if you want to save that sticker, mask it off with some tape, take an X-Acto knife, trim it out, and then you're good to go. Just don't forget to remove it at the end. Um, pins you can fix with uh, drilling and putting in a piece of staple and then uh, or paper clip and then using that milliput product we've talked about in other videos to re-establish the pin so don't be shy about getting broken canopies there um, other than that just make sure you hit it from all different angles there's a couple of uh, 90 degree corners and whatnot in here where you might miss or if you think you're hitting it from one angle you're actually missing it completely and don't forget to do the front of the uh, instrument combing as well and last but not least well not certainly not last but um, the skis. So there's lots of nooks and crannies in here and lots of places to create uh, problems for uh, paint capture. So you might notice that you'll have to hit this again from multiple angles or even just get your brush in there to make sure that you've got everything covered in paint because while you may not notice it now because you're changing or you're likely changing the color of the skis, um, you'll see it later and it'll just be a pain in the butt. Same thing on the bottom side, there's lots of nooks and crannies and paint traps in there, so make sure you get the, some good coverage on that. Now, the engines. Um, classic air trap for the engines is getting paint all the way in there, even if you use an airbrush, the way it hits the back surface and then bounces around all inside can create some turbulence inside and then uh, paint doesn't get everywhere you want it to go. So just keep in mind, you may have to employ your brush to get it exactly the way you want. Same thing for the front. Um, what I've noticed too, when I was first doing custom Skyhawks, was that getting this uh, spinner in the middle of the uh, turbine here uh, completely covered in paint can be a little bit of a chore. So just uh, mind your P's and Q's when you're doing that sort of thing. And finally, with the attachment point, is that you will likely lose some functionality there. And uh, you want to make sure that you smooth this out from the previous wear and tear on the vehicle that you've bought. Uh, and that this is the downside for the engines. Uh, one of mine, I forgot to, I put installed them wrong, so I have to, or incorrectly, so I have to fix it. So uh, that's the size of that. And really, uh, that's all there is to it. So with the examples I've shown you and going over the Skyhawk kind of piece by piece here, I hope that helps you out. And if you haven't tried a Skyhawk already, certainly motivates you to do so. It is a fantastic vehicle in its original form, but I hope I've shown you that it can look even more amazing in any sort of custom scheme that you may come up with. Um, and that's all I've got. So what I'm going to say is, uh, again, thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate the support. And if you're just new to the channel, then maybe leave a like and subscribe. There's always going to be future content where I go crazy with everything. So I hope everybody's projects are going fantastically. And if not, then don't give up. Fight through and see what you can do. Uh, and well, as always, in the meantime, be safe and have fun. <laughs>